Sarah with Lonza Healing Hair Care, and I'm here to share with you how to do winter blonding. So I've already started my technique here on my girl, Heather. Um, she's been pretty neglectful getting her hair done lately. She just had another baby, which we're very excited about, but it's time for her to come back in and get her regrowth, refreshed up. The one thing I notice always with blondes, for whatever reason in the winter, we feel like we have to go darker. So a couple things to think about is formulation, obviously, number one. But number two, I always think about also what happens when they come back in the spring and they want to be blonde again. So I have some ideas to share with you how to create a little bit more depth without creating too much darkness. That way you're able to just not maintain it and maintain some brightness around the face and through the interior of the hair, but also to, to give you some ideas of how to create depth back in the hair too. You will see Heather's before pictures, uh, obviously after this uh, live, and you will also see Heather's after shots today here on BTC Stories or maybe on their page or Facebook, but they're gonna definitely make sure you guys see uh, the end of, their, of her color. So for the next 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna be sharing with you a really easy foiling technique that gives you a lot of coverage really, really fast. So what I've done is I've already started the left side, so that way the right side um, can process with it uh, as you know or see you could probably see I foil pretty fast but I always tell people whenever you're foiling uh, if you're a slower foiler you want to make sure that you don't camp on one side more than like seven minutes so I'm coming up on like that seven minute marker where I have camped on here for a little bit a little bit a length of time but not too long so I'm going to go ahead and just finish up this last foil I'm doing a weave into a slicing mechanism. I love doing weaves into slice. This gives a really nice variation of a lot of lightness towards the face and a little bit lightness going towards the back. I also go into, as you can see, always on the soft with my brush, never going on a hard line. Hard lines create hard lines demarcation. By going in softly, I'm able to create a softer line at that retouch area. So let's talk about how we divided the hair off. So I did a right and left side, as you can see, at the front of the ear here. Then I took out the parietal ridge area, eliminated the top, and eliminated the front. The parietal ridge area is where we're gonna put the dap back into the hair. The one thing that Heather's lost is like that dimension. So people always ask like, how do I get that depth back in? The depth comes from here. So we're gonna low light this area here using a level six at the retouch and then going into a level eight. That's gonna be all the depth we're gonna to add to the hair. Everywhere else, we're gonna go ahead and highlight. So let's talk about hairline highlighting. So one of the crazy things about Heather is her hairline, as you can see, is really, really weak. But the thing is, she likes to pull her hair up a lot and she doesn't wanna see any darkness. So here's a tip. Whenever I'm doing hairline highlighting, I always use the toe of my comb. By using the toe of my comb, I pull all the little hairs, not just the long hairs, but also the short ones too. It will grab everything. You can also use a little bit of hairspray if you want to, to keep those sections together if the hair is super fly away, so that way you can get every piece of hair. So if you wanted to, you could spray a little bit of hairspray. That way you can gather all those little hairs together and make sure you get all those. Now what's important about doing hairline highlights is how you place the color in. So I always like to place it in and paint it in the direction that it lives. So if she's gonna pull her hair up a lot, I want to actually pull this section and paint up, as you can see here. So I'm gonna go ahead, apply my decolorizer all the way through, pulling those little hairs up, painting the hair going straight up, Then taking my foil, I made it a little bit longer than the hair. Actually, I made it a lot longer than the hair. I'm gonna go ahead, fold it down, find the base of the foil, secure, and then push. That way I have all those little hairs and I've also pushed those other little hairs up and I'm protecting the hair behind it so that way I don't get any bleeds. So let's do that again. So I'm gonna take my next section. I'm gonna take it about a half inch. Depending on the density of the hair will determine how much hair I leave out in between. Heather has fine hair, but a lot of it. I'm gonna slice going into a weave. Now notice how much longer this hair is. So I'm gonna make sure I pull the foil long enough. I'm using my Quality Touch foils, which is gonna give me that extra length that I need and my dispenser so that way I don't have to work with an assistant. I work by myself a lot when it comes to foiling. I go ahead and paint that decolorizer all the way down and then push my decolorizer up. 
I'm using our powder decolorizer and 20 volume. It's one part powder, two parts 20 volume peroxide. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drop my foil past the lip, as you can see, push down, secure, secure. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Uh, I got Belle here on the camera. So if you guys know Belle, if you ever watch any of my lives, Belle does all of my lives. She's my professional live person. A couple exciting things that are coming up in Belle's life. Belle's actually going to beauty school and she starts when now, Belle? Tuesday. She starts Tuesday. She'll be going to the Paul Mitchell Academy here in Chicago. She's very, very excited. So make sure you give a shout out to Belle and congratulate her on her new endeavors in going to beauty school. We're very excited for her. We cannot wait till she comes back. So if you have any questions, though, please feel free to ask Belle. Belle knows how to read questions off of here. So you can go ahead and she can make sure that there's a response. So again, making sure that foil is just a little bit longer than my section, pushing my foil down, securing, and then pushing up. You can see the organization there, which is really nice. Now that we've done doing that, we've done three diagonals going back. Remember, diagonal lines create curtains in the hair. So it's going to allow the hair to swing right to left. Now that I'm at that space here, I'm going to go ahead and place a sheet into the hair. Sheet would be a horizontal placement, which is going to give me maximum coverage in the area that it lives in. Again, I'm going to slice and then weave. I'm working in a little tiny area first, but I'll move into a larger area secondary. Again, I'm using our powder decolorizer, Lanza powder decolorizer, one part, two parts, 20 volume developer. If you've never tried anything, Lanza, our powder decolorizer is absolutely amazing. So if you are looking to try something new, this is an area that I tell people that you'll feel comfortable with it. It's amazing. It gives you an immense amount of lift, but the most important part about it is it has our keratin healing system in it, so it's going to maintain integrity. So again, slice and then weave. That's going to create that really large disbursement of color going to the right and a softer live view markation going to the left. You'll also notice too that I am folding my foils. Heather is about a level six-ish. I've been doing her hair for a super long time. She lifts really beautifully. So I wanna kind of just slow that lift a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold the foils. If I was doing my own hair, someone who's like a level three, four, I would suggest sandwiching the foils, not folding. Folding the foils can actually decrease your lift. So if you're really trying to maintain an aggressive amount of lift uh, and you want to do it quickly, you want to sandwich your foils. If you are looking to slow your lift down a little bit, you can fold your foils. So here with Heather, being that she lifts really beautifully and she's pretty light naturally, I'm going to go ahead and just fold those foils up. I'm also using a board, right, wrong, or indifferent. It doesn't make a difference if you use a board or not. I love using a board because it keeps my foils flat. It allows proper saturation on the top and the bottom of the strand. So that's what I love about using a board. All right, so we're coming up just this back of the head. Um, something else too, here's a tip too, when you're doing, um, for example, I'm noticing this right now. So I wanna keep this section really clear. If you put your clip in this way, if you notice, it actually bevels the hair over the section. If you take the clip and you place it upside down, believe it or not, it actually bevels the hair backwards. So if you have hair that keeps beveling into your section, put your clips in upside down. Just a good tip to share with you guys uh, with that struggle when it comes to clips. Heather, would you mind putting your head just a little bit back? Thank you, babe. Oh, clips out. Oh, clips out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just continue up the head here. We're placing a lot of lightness and disbursement through the back. We're almost to the place we're gonna start to add that depth in. Now, you might ask, why did I divide the head in many areas? Do I do that every time I work on the chair? The answer is yes. The reason why I do a lot of sectioning is sectioning keeps me organized. So if you section the head off, you would be surprised how much more efficient you can be versus when you are trying to hit a lot of hair really, really fast. So disbursement is a lot simpler. It keeps you a lot more organized. And also, too, I kind of feel like you can almost envision where the color is going to lay when the hair is sectioned. All right. So we're gonna finish off this last foil here. Actually, I think I have one more to go. Again, going on the soft versus the firm of the brush, pushing it to colorizer in, my lightener, 
to lift with a beautiful line demarcation versus a firm line demarcation. If you do, if you do go in with a firm line though, let's say you just prefer to do that, another really great way of softening it up is by doing a root shadow. So if you go in and root shadow a lot of your guests, that can also soften the line of demarcation. I'm gonna go ahead now and do this on a diagonal back because this is my last one and I wanna back this section up because this is gonna be a lot of depth here. So when I'm doing this, I also wanna make sure too that I bring the foil over as far to the corner as possible so the overhang does not hang on the side where I want to create more lift. If the overhang hangs, what can happen is, is I can create uh, less lightness there because the foil is covering the area. So bringing that foil to the corner, just a tip to maintain lightness around the corner. Alrighty, we have a question from Sarah. Hi, Sarah. So, do you sometimes start on a lower peroxide and then move onto a higher strength? You can do that. That's a great question. Uh, what I suggest doing, though, is if if you're somebody, here's the thing. Sometimes lower developers won't give you the lift you're looking for, especially 10 volume. Decolorizer only has so much life to it. So if you have someone who's really, really dark and you know using 10 volume for an hour is not going to get you that level 7, level 8, or level 9, I suggest using a higher volume and just going through and pulling the foils out when they're done and letting the product air oxidize. That way you're getting an even lift. Um, sometimes changing developers can really inhibit you because sometimes the front can get done faster even though you put the back on first. Reason why fronts really process fast is, sit, check this out, Sarah, look how fine her hair is around her face. This happens from hormones, it happens from abuse, it happens from skincare, makeup, all those things. So the lifting action around the hairline is always going to be more aggressive. So my suggestion is just as a friend, colorist to colorist, I would go through using the same developer, but when she's done, pull the foils, make sure you just kind of dry them off with a towel and let them air oxidize. That's going to give you the efficient lift you're looking for and guaranteed look too for your end result. Perfect. Cool. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. All right, so now we're around the hairline. Same thing that we did in the nape. We're going to go ahead and do it around the hairline using the toe of the comb. You can see Heather is a, a victim of someone who is at a very, very, very weak hairline. Happens to a lot of us. So we want to make sure we gra ga grab all those hairs. So here's my section here. I'm going to go ahead and take my foil. Again, I'm going to place it in the way she wears her hairs. Heather is an aggressive ponytail wearer. So uh, having a lot of kids getting ready on the fly. Okay, I'm gonna leave those ends out because our ends are ready lightened, right? So I'm gonna protect those ends. Again, folding the foil down past the lip, taking my foil or my, end, I'm sorry, the tail of my comb, securing that line of demarcation. I'm gonna go directly behind the previous section, leaving out this little section here because we're gonna do this another time. So I wanna go behind it. Look at those little hairs, boo. Oh. <laughs> Heather just had, she had, you had two babies, like, like nine or 10 months apart, right? Yeah. 10, uh, 11. 11 <clears throat> months apart. She's a superhero. Okay. So for <laughs> all my superheroes out there. So again, I'm going to slice and I'm going to weave. I want the heavy hooded color here towards the face, lighten it off towards the ear. Again, taking my foil, placing it in the opposite direction. Even though this is the direction she's going to pull her hair up in. Everyone can see that. Taking my decolorizer, placing it on my foil, folding my foil down past the lip, again, securing. You can also fold up if you need to, folding up. The important part is that securing part. Last one, I like to do three, almost back to back. This is gonna guarantee a nice soft line demarcation. Slice, weave, taking my foil, placing it upwards. Can everyone see that? Get nice and tight. Most importantly, that, and most importantly though, I'm really making sure that the underneath of the strand is the lightest section so that when, when she pulls her hair back, she feels like she bursts that highlight, which is important to her. She likes to feel like she owns it. Again, taking my foil, taking the lip, pulling it down, crossing it over, and then folding my foil. Once I'm here at the top of the ear, uh, depending on how long the section is, sometimes I'll do three or four. To be honest, I'm gonna do one more because the top of her ear, I wanna go slightly past it with that diagonal back. Again, I'm gonna do a horizontal weave now that I'm past the top of the ear. At this point, because I'm past the top of the ear, I can now go back to forward. 
Okay, so this is my last one. Alrighty, we have another question from Sarah. Oh, Sarah again. So why do sometimes do you use the board or sometimes not at all? Great question. So I use the board when the hair is really, really long. And I, like, for example, sometimes I'll use it just then. Sometimes I won't. If there's a lot of foils underneath, it starts to get a little cumbersome. So I'll use the foil as like a board that's sitting underneath it. So for example, where I'm sitting at now, I could use the board or I could use the foil. There's a lot stacked here. So it kind of almost works like a like a like a secret board if that makes any sense okay again diagonal back slice weave tearing it off you can see how i'm starting to gather these two sections together which is a great create a nice amount of lightness in between and we'll do one more that top out. I'm just going to slice this whole entire section because it's so dark. We'll call it after this one. Now we would do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to repeat the other side quickly for you guys. So you guys can see how that is done. This ever happens too. If you ever, I just pulled on the foil, if this ever happens, pull up and down and just reset. Don't try to move the foil. It's not worth it. All right, so this section here, we're gonna save for next, but let me finish up that hairline around the face. So going mm. back to, we have this hairline here. I don't know about you guys, but the flies this year, I can't with the flies this year. They're horrible. Anybody else have a fly issue in their salon? So we can't even have our door open for two minutes. Okay, so again, using the tongue, pulling the hairs down. Pulling up. This is a really fine section. I want to make sure that the hair is out of the way. Putting my clip in upside down. It's going to drag that clip away. For those of you that are just joining me, I said that backwards. For those of you that are just joining me, we're using our powder decolorizer, lots of powder decolorizer with 20 volume. It's one part powder, two parts 20 volume developer. I'm going to go on a back side, brushing up. taking my foil, bringing it past the lip of the foil, pulling down. Again, I like to do like two or three of these back to back. Normally I do about three, maybe a little bit of hair in between. Weave, slice. Again, taking my foil a little bit longer than the length of her hair. I'm a big advocate of using foils that come on rolls. If anybody knows me, I'm not much of a pop-up foil fan. Um, I just prefer to always measure the length of my hair to a foil. Definitely works better for me. Again, taking my foil, pulling it down. Alrighty, we have another question from Janice. Oh, hi Janice. How much hair are you leaving in between each foil? This is a great question. Thank you Janice for asking that. So depending on the consumer will determine how much you leave in between. So if someone is like Mufasa, hair four days, I'm going to leave out a lot less hair. Uh, someone like Heather, she's got medium to fine hair, so I'm leaving out a little bit of a bigger section of hair. So it just depends on how much hair they have. So denser the hair, less the hair you leave out. Fire the hair, the more hair you can leave out. Great question. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to throw them my way. Not just on what I'm doing now, but any other questions in general when it comes to color. I would love to hear from you. Also, too, if you guys get a chance, check out my Instagram page. I'm Leah Freeman One. Um, I do a tip of the day a few days a week, sharing with you things that I do behind the chair that help me and my business grow. So I do a lot of that. Uh, I do at least two a week. So make sure you check it out. And you'll see Heather is on there quite often. Well, she used to be on there a lot more before she had all these babies. All right. All right. So all right. Well, sorry, oh, Leah, sorry, one question. Yeah. Okay, from Tamisha, what is the purpose of flipping the foils up versus down towards the face? Great question. So here's the thing. Whenever we're coloring hair, the side that we paint on tends to be the side that's the brightest. So if someone pulls their hair up, especially up this way or up to the sides, when you go this way, we tend to create a line because the brightest point is on the top of the section. So when you pull the hair back, it's almost like there's a hot spot underneath. So by going backwards, you're painting the hair 
how it lays. So by going this way, the hair is gonna lay this way. So just a really good way of applying the decolorizer. So the brightest point of the hair is where it actually sits at. Great question. All right, any other questions? No, we're good for now. We're good, okay, perfect. All right, so we're coming around the corner here. We're almost done. I'm at that top high point of the ear at this point, so right behind it. So I was gonna throw two little hairs, uh, two little foils in here. Interesting enough, remember too, sometimes depending on the width of the head, widths of the heads can be a little bit different. Heather is definitely wider on the right side than she is the left side. So the section's gonna be a little bit smaller, just based on the fact that our, our heads, when you split them down half, our sisters are not twins. So it, it could be a little bit, a little bit wider on one side than the other. It's pretty common though in head form. All right, so we're finishing up this last section right here. I'm gonna call it. All right, so let's talk about Pride of Ridge. So now we're gonna do that low line technique I talked about. Mm -hmm. So I have on my cart here, I have my lighter of my two shades. This is going to be my 8NV uh, Lonzi Healing Color. One part eight NV, two parts Demi Developer. And then this bowl here, I have six NV, 20 grams, 10 grams of 7P, and five grams of 4 NA. So you might ask, why am I using a level four? I'm using a level four because I want to shadow that root a lot, but not make it too dark. I have to think about when she comes back and you know, four to six weeks, I have to lift that out. So I anchor the color with a deeper shade versus going really, really dark. So I tend to put a lot of fours in my low lights. So what I want to do here now is I'm going to take this section. I'm going to lay a foil in to protect the hair around it. I'm going to take my darker shade. Apply this with my first one to the foil. At this point, I'm now going to put gloves on so I can rip through this section really, really fast. So I'm using just this area. It's in the Pride of Ridge. So if we remember, Pride of Ridge sits right at the roundness of the head. So here's my darker, my two shades. And then here is my medium, not so dark. And I'm going to bleed these two together. So again, pick up my section that lives in this area. Something you can do also if you're afraid of spotting up the ends. Apply your lighter of your two shades first, right over where you want to make it a little bit darker. Then go in. Alrighty. Apply your darker of your two shades. So Lisa would like to know, do you always start at the back at the nape and work to the front? Yes. The reason for being is Lisa, if if I do the front only, it's definitely when people are coming in just to get the money piece retouched. The reason why we start in the back is because the back is always darker. It's the least exposed to sun. It's the least exposed to heat and washing. So by starting in the back, it's going to take a little bit longer for that color to process. So I always go to the front last because honestly, the fronts can process sometimes like it's like insanely faster. It's like rapid fire fast when it comes to, um, the lifting process. Just remember hairlines, makeup, sun, blow drying, flat ironing, curling. We're really good at doing this up around our face and we tend to neglect the back the most, even with shampooing. Think about how hard you shampoo the top and front of your hair versus the back of the hair. So just things to think about, product abuse, all that stuff. So starting the back, I always suggest, and then moving forward. Great question, Lisa. Thank you for that. So everyone can see I've added that added depth in there. This is that area of corner. So when you when you curl the hair, you're going to see that dimension. That dimension is going to come straight through in that Prado Ridge area. So at this point, it's also important too. I want to make sure I wash my gloves off at this point because I'm going to. I don't want to fingerprint the hair. I'm going to take down my first section. I'm going to take down this section here. Again, applying my foil underneath to protect the hair. <clears throat> applying my depth down at the top is option one. My lightness to the ends is option two. 
because I'm working in a clean foil. Fingerprinting the hair isn't a huge concern of mine yet. But when I start to glove the color in, that's when I get concerned. So I want to make sure that I'm working in fine sections for proper saturation. Applying the light, lightest color first over the top of the section, pulling that color down through the mid lengths and ends. And remember too, if you leave the ends out when you do your glaze later, uh, which I'm gonna do a lighter glaze, it doesn't hurt either. So a little bit of the ends are left out when you're doing this is fine. It's really important to get that depth back in though. So I like to go about one level darker than they are naturally. That's why I'm using a, like a, a four and a six together. So again, lighter of the two shades. You also notice too, I'm going backwards and forwards with my brush. This is gonna cause proper saturation on the top and the bottom of the strand. Works really well when you're dealing with really dense hair, just to make sure that we have that really beautiful, soft, but yet saturated ends. So to go back and repeat, we have our min length and end color, which is 8NV in our healing color line. This is a European demi. What I always have about European demis for is they maintain brightness. Um, versus using like a liquid demi. So if you blondes are starting to get really super dingy, I always ask people are using an American or liquid demi. So in this circumstance, I love to, especially on colors like Heather, to maintain that brightness in between, I like to go more towards a European demi. That'd be a one part color, two parts developer. Do you have a question, Beth? We do from Ken. Thank you for the question. How often do you recommend a touch up service? So retouch like in foils, Ken, or in and just color in general, like great coverage. I think it's great coverage. Great coverage. I, I recommend so. you stay within the four to six week window. When you start going past the six week window, you start to get banding. All right, so we have the depth added. We're done with depth now. We don't need any more. This is gonna give that dimension that she was missing through that mid shaft. Now it's time for me to finish uh, the hairline in the front and then we're gonna do the top. So because this area, I know she lifts so fast, plus she's got a lot of heat here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this for last. I'm gonna go ahead and do the top now. So first and foremost, I wanna cover up the hair that I added the depth to. And now I'm going to do my horizontal placement going this direction, because I wanna create sheets of coverage. So I'm gonna start at the top of the head. Half inch sections. I want to do a slice, then weave, and then baby weave. So I have three types of placement in this hair. I have slice, dense weave, fine weave, baby light. Now, when you're working in wide sections like this, here's something else to think about. When I place my foil down, I place it in pinch, and then I take my fingers and I push. By pushing it, it allows the foil to wrap around the head. Again, applying my decolorizer and softly. Yes, well. Alrighty, did you do any low lights in the back of Heather's head? I did, all through the Prider Ridge. So the whole entire Prider Ridge, all, all the way around here, is gonna be that low light. What I'll do, guys, for you is when I put up Heather's finish, uh, which I'll do tomorrow just because I won't have time uh, today. I'm going to have time to finish her today, but I could do a head form where it actually shows you exactly where the low light is. So again, slice, big weave into little weave. Hey, Kim, can you give me some uh, powder decolorizer, please, in 20 volume? I'm almost out. Thank you. And I was thinking I was going to go superhero with 30 grams. Okay, again, slice. I'm going to have you scoot your butt down a little bit, Heather, if you don't mind. If you scoot no. down a little bit, yeah. Like, yeah, like Let me that. See. Does this go down any further? Oh, it does. Oh. Perfect. I'm using our, our makeup chairs here on our, we have an apparel store on this side. So we have a skincare area. So I'm not working in actual, like, real hydraulic. So it's pretty high, I never realized. All right. So again, doing that horizontal placement on top of the head is gonna give me maximum coverage. And the reason why I'm slicing heavily around the face is so when I connect that money piece, 
you're going to see that money piece like really pop. So it's important to really support that money piece in the front. So again, we're almost at the top of the head. Big weave, micro weave. Think about too when you guys are doing weaves and your place and your placements, how important it is to kind of like change up. I think sometimes they get really, really attached to one way. And we'll just do like all slices or all weaves or all baby lights. I like to do a lot of variation, especially in one foil. This is going to create a really nice amount of contrast, especially what we're seeing now. We're seeing so much high contrast hair color. It's going to help with that. Okay, I'm going to turn her now. Still working on a horizontal, keeping that front hairline out. And you'll notice too, guys, like we're on a live and I'm answering questions, but I just want you to see like, how fast you can move when you know placement. So like right now, if I were to actually do this full placement with her, it would take me about 30 minutes. So knowing placement and head form is really, really important when it comes to fall. So just consider when you guys look at the head form that I send out, I want you to look at those lines and think about where those lines fall. I always suggest on the top of the head to do horizontal placement. Horizontal placement is fantastic for a lot of coverage really, really quickly. So again, big weaves and the slice. For those of you that maybe join us late, we're using Lanza Powder to Colorizer with 20 volume. And I'm also making sure that I maintain the length of my foil. As you guys can see, I use my full foil versus really doing a lot of swirling. Swirling sometimes can cause spots. So I always suggest using a long foil. So again, baby light, weave, slice. Heather, 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 this outgrow girl. All right. So going in, using my brush on the side, creating that soft line demarcation. If you're gonna go in firm, usually that's when we're gonna do a base softening. I probably will end up doing a base softening on her, shadow, shadow root on her. Uh, I will tend to use a shadow root that I use as a low light. So the same exact formula, you guys are seeing for her low light, I will be using for a shadow root too. Again, also too, when you ever you're dealing with highlighting, it's also important to think about how fine your sections are. Fine sections create better lift. Yes, ma'am. Alrighty, so another question. Do you always run lightener through the ends with a process like this? It don't, it depends. So like, it's for example, I'm running through old low lights. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm leaving out hair that's really, really light. So if the hair is really, really light, I won't pull through. But if the hair has an old low light in it, I will. Great question. Yeah, maintaining integrity is imperative. She's got a lot of like depth running through her hair, like old, old color. All right. So I'm coming to my last one at the high point of the head. Again, going in. Yes, ma'am. Okay, from Cindy, how long do you process your shadow roots? Shadow roots can process, remember, here's the thing. The way color works is, is oxidation. So if a color line tells you that their demise work in 20 minutes, that usually gives you about 20 shampoos. So if I leave it on a little bit longer, she'll just get more shampoos out of it. So the longer you leave the colors on, the longer they last with when you're um, shampooing. So I'll probably just process that, that shadow, uh, the shadow root once I'm done, probably 15, 20 minutes. Just because I want to make a soft line demarcation in the hair. So, okay. So again, hairline. It's too thick. You're really heavy on the right side. Okay. Pulling back. Again, putting my, my clip in backwards. It's going to keep the hair pushed away. Now, taking my foil, flipping it up. Normally, I would be standing behind her doing this, by the way, but because we're on film, it's a little bit different. Leaving those ends out because we don't want to relift those ends because she'll have nothing left. Taking my foil, securing it from underneath, and then folding it up for comfort. On her face. Next one, directly behind it. I'm going to do same exact placement, except for this time, I'm going to weave out, drop out the top, 
taking my foil, pushing back. By doing this, this is going to interlock the front piece with the second piece. Going to the side, pulling forward, locking down, pushing up. This piece now that I just weaved out, I'm going to do a really super fine weave with this. Starting to add depth back in around and away from the hairline. Continue going backwards, adding more and more depth back in. So that everything's been super, super tight, right? Everything's been super, super lack of hair in between foils. I'm just slowly adding more and more foils in to go backwards to add more depth. So that pop of lightness is really concentrated on the face. All right, guys, we're finishing up our last few foils here. Do we have any other questions that we need to get answered before we let you guys go? Okay, from Simone. Hi, Simone. What are you using to protect, to protect the hair during the full process? What do you mean? What am I using? I don't know what the question is. Can you go a little bit further into that, Simone? Like, am I adding an additive to my decolorizer, I'm, gu I'm guessing you're wondering? Is that what you mean? She's the answer, yes. She's the answer? All right, she has the answer, yes. No, not yet. Okay, well, Simone, when you're ready, babe, I'm here for you. Okay, continuing up the head. You can see that I'm taking more and more hair. And uh, in, in between the sections, you're starting to see more depth added back in. It's going to give that pop around the face. All right, so continue up the head. We have about two more foils to go. Now what we'll do is if we check the foils, we'll look in the back, we'll see which ones are ready to be taken off. Uh, I'm not one that takes my customers to the shampoo bowl and wash them in between placement. What we do is we pull foils and wipe them off with a towel and allow that to colorize or just to kind of air dry. So, and then we'll just start to pull the foils one by one until she's ready. Now, to finish off the process, we'll go ahead and do a base on her. We're going to use the same exact low-light formula that we did in the back and place it on her base. Through her main links and ends, we're going to finish her off probably with uh, Lonzi Healing Color 9 and V Demi Translucent. This is my last one. All right, so let's do a quick recap. Question, is this Simone? Um, no, this is from Janice. Okay, hi, but Janice. will you put your client under the dryer? Great question. Uh, we don't use dryers at our salon because, uh, to be honest with you, they're really aggressive. I always suggest, you know, if you're having a hard time with your customers lifting, I would suggest um, just upping your peroxide. Sometimes the thing about dryers are not only is the product aggressive, so is the heat. So... In all honesty, I'm not much of a dryer user. We don't have dryers, like I said, in our location. Um, but if I can't get her to lift enough, what we'll go through is I'll find sections. We'll put some powder and 30 volume in a bowl and just apply it to the top of the section that wasn't lifted enough. Cool. All right, so we started in the back of the head. We split the head down the center. We did those few foils doing that opposite painting direction, about three or four back to back. And then we went into horizontal placement, back and diagonal, back into horizontal, back and diagonal section here around the Prida Ridge. We use our darker shade, pulling it through about three inches out to create that depth back in the area. So that way when she does her curls, that pop here is gonna allow everything else to look lighter. Leaving the ends out because the ends left out is gonna create that really beautiful dimension. Around the hairline, diagonal back three times and then flipping the foil in the opposite direction. So that way she pulls her hair back and going back into horizontal. Horizontal placement on the whole top of the head, and then horizontal placement around the face, starting with two back-to-back -back foils with no hair left out in between, and then leaving some sections out in between. So guys, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. How many minutes do we go? 40. 40 minutes. We said 30 to 45, so we did a good job. 
Um, on behalf of Lonzi Healing Hair Care and myself, thank you so much for joining us today on the BTC Live. Thank you behind the chair for allowing us to be part of your education journey today. If you have any questions about Lonza, you can reach out to me. We have a 24 rule. I will answer to your questions within 24 seconds, 24 minutes, or 24 hours. Uh, please make sure to visit me at Leah Freeman One on Instagram and check out my tip of the day. I hope you guys learned something today and I hope to see you guys soon. Stay healthy. Thanks, guys.